The last thing we're going to look at today is just a couple of quick definitions uh, that you'll see in chemistry. The first definition that we're going to look at is the term accuracy. Accuracy is how close you get to the right answer. Now, if we were together right now, I would be standing in front of you and I might ask you to take a guess as to how tall I was. And since you're not with me in person, um, you might draw options of five foot four, five foot five, five foot six, five foot seven, right? Without actually holding a ruler up to me, you're not really sure what the answer is. Well, whoever of you would have thrown out the answer five foot six, is the most accurate person in the room because that is my actual real height that they got closest to the right answer. That's what accuracy is. Precision is how repeatable your results are. Do you get the same answer over and over and over again? So let's say you stepped on a broken bathroom scale. And you go to step up on that scale and it says, you weigh 985 pounds. And you jump off the scale and say, what? And you step back on the scale and they say 985 pounds. Well, your results are precise because you keep getting the same results over and over again. Which leads to our next question. Can you be precise without being accurate? You betcha you can. Yeah, you can get the same wrong answer over and over and over again. Maybe that's happened to you in math class before. That you keep trying a math problem and you get the wrong answer. And you try again and you get the wrong answer. You try again and you get the wrong answer. You're precise if you keep getting the same results over and over again. You're just not accurate. Can you be accurate without being precise? Can you get the right answer once and then never again? Yeah, that's possible too. And if you're talking about a math test, let's hope you're accurate on the test, right? So if you were playing darts uh, and you're aiming towards that target, if you were accurate and precise, the, the right answer when you're playing darts is the bullseye, right? That's where you want to hit. So if you were accurate, you'd hit the bullseye. If you're precise, it happens over and over again. So accurate and precise, you hit the bullseye over and over and over again. So that's if you're accurate and precise. What if you were precise but not accurate? So you're getting the wrong answer over and over and over again. So maybe you'd hit this spot over and over again, right? You're not very accurate because you're not getting the right answer, but you are precise because you're getting repeated results. The way I keep those two terms straight in my head, I think of the P in repeatable and the P in precision, just so I remember which one's which. There is a mathematical formula to help you see how close you are to the right answer, how accurate you are. And this mathematical formula is called the percent error equation. So when you're calculating percent error, you would do the theoretical answer minus the experimental over the theoretical. So the theoretical is the right answer. That's the one that you should get. And the experimental is when you actually go in the lab and you try the experiment for yourself, what results do you get? So let's say you were doing a lab where you're measuring the density of a piece of gold. And a student went into the lab and they got a result of 18.7 grams per cubic centimeter. But if the true density of gold is 19.3, what would the percent error be? So, that's a crazy looking percentage. Uh, percent error 
we're going to write theoretical. What should it be? What's the true answer? 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter is what it should be. But in the lab, when they measured it, they got it to be 18.7 over 19.3. times 100. So if I simplify that a little bit, the 19.3 minus the 18.7 on top would turn into 0.6 grams per cubic centimeter over 19.3 grams per cubic centimeter. And you can see in the equation up above, right here and here, these are absolute value bars. So I'm going to include those here and here. It doesn't really matter this time around because um, I get a positive result. But if you ever do have a situation where when you do that subtraction problem on the top and you come up with a negative answer, the absolute value bars would flip the sign on it. Well, that grams per cubic centimeter on the top would cancel out with grams per cubic centimeter on the bottom. And then in our calculator, all we have to do is type in 0.6 divided by 19.3 times 100, and you will get roughly 3%. So we would say that that student's percent to error is 3%. That's pretty good. That means they were only off by about 3%. You want your percent error to be low.